next guest is scoring big wins, making headlines and history for this Instagram post. Take a look. Last month, Hampton University student and college football player Byron Perkins told his followers, quote, I've decided that I'm going to make a change and stop running away from myself. I'm gay. Let it be known that this is not a decision or a choice. Yes, this is who I am. This is who I've been. And this is who I'm going to be. Simply put, I am who I am. With those words, Byron made history as the first openly gay football player at an HBCU, a historically black college. Take a look. I like to say a lot of times football is life. It's all about perseverance and, and uh, determination and, and not giving up. I thought that I was just coming out. I thought that I was just going to be another out athlete, but I became so much more. I couldn't keep pretending. I couldn't keep acting for the benefit of others. Once I realized that I was hurting myself to appease the idea people had of me, I decided that I no longer wanted to live that way. My teammates have been nothing but supportive, nothing but loving and caring. I, I'm really grateful, especially to the LGBTQ community. They've been so supportive of me and helpful in, in my transition of coming out. So I hope that I can inspire somebody else, whether it be straight, gay, bi, just to be the best version of yourself. Here with his first national TV interview, Tam Fan, please welcome Byron Perkins to the show. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, welcome, welcome. Have a seat, have a seat. Thank you. Oh, okay, in Hampton. Always, oh, well, always. Oh, always. I'm telling you, this is amazing because I know that you had a game with just this past weekend. Mm -hmm. And your post went viral. Yes, it did. Were you ready for it when you hit sin? Because I always wonder, what's the moment like before you hit sin, and then when you realize you can't take it back? It's out. I, I did realize it was going to have as much impact as it had. Uh, really? I, no, not at all. Not at all. I thought that I was just um, essentially just doing something that was going to, you know, help me. I didn't realize that I was going to be an influence to everybody else. What had happened? In, I'm really texting. What had happened? What happened uh, yeah. right what, in your life that made you want to do it in that moment? Mm. A lot, a lot. You know, now that I think about it, it was just a mixture of, of wanting to be better. Not only better for myself, but better for my team, uh, better in a, from an academia standpoint. Uh, I really just wanted to be a better version of myself, and I realized that I couldn't do that because, you know, I was hiding a version of myself and uh, it was really hindering me. Hindering you. You wrote, uh -huh. um, I've come to understand that life is precious and I could be gone at any moment. Therefore, I will no longer be living a lie. Mm -hmm. No one should have to live a life crippled by what society thinks. That's what it is. <laughs> um, how old are you now? I'm 22. You're 22. You're a baby. Uh, I'm 22 no. years old. Oh, baby. You're a, uh, listen, you're a baby. Take it from me. Okay. Uh, the fact that you were thinking about how life could be gone in a flash and that time is precious. At 22, I was not. I thought I had all the time in the world mm. to get everything right and everything wrong. Mm. But it was weighing on you so much so mm -hmm. that at 22, you felt the weight of this. Mm -hmm. When your family read, who was the first person to call you after you put hit send on it? Oh, well, the first person who called me was um was my mother. Uh she was uh she wasn't uh completely on board at first in particular because she was worried about how the world would treat her baby. I'm her only son. So in a lot of ways she was, you know, very scared of how the world would react, how people would treat me, how I would be seen. Uh, but I told her that I'm her child. You know, can't nobody stop me because I came from her. So, mm. you know, I, I trust her. Thank you. Yeah. On campus, what's, what's it been like for you? <sighs> it's been a relief, really, just not to be able to be a more authentic version of myself, you know, not to be, you know, you know from a discreet standpoint, uh, paranoid all the time. You were feeling that? Absolutely, oh, wow. absolutely. It was the pressures of everybody and what they were saying. And were you worried about like these whisper campaigns that can mm -hmm. start and people saying, oh, you know, I heard yeah. this. Was that happening? Uh, yes, it, it was whispering, you know. Uh, even my mom started to draw red flags when I was younger, you know. Um, 
she would draw red flags, you know, which made me even really self-conscious. She would say, okay, my son is um, in high school. My son is good looking. My son is, has a division one scholarship, but my son has never had a girlfriend. So in a lot of ways, people, you know, put one or two together. And that always just, you know, in a lot of ways made me even more self-conscious mm. because... So you had to, as they call code switch, you yeah. had to, especially mm -hmm. being in football, mm -hmm. you had to act a certain way even more so, you yeah, felt? definitely. I definitely had to um, put on that mask, per se, as I said um, in that post. And in a lot of ways, um, it hindered me, as I said before, from from being a better version of myself. You know, as I said before, I was, I was angrier. I was, I was a lot more... Um, just irate uh, mm. by everything, and, I, and I, I knew why, but I also knew that I, I felt like I couldn't fix it at that moment because mm. I understood that football was a prerequisite in order for me to be successful. It's my scholarship, it's yeah. my livelihood, and it's my passion. But I also came to realize that I can't enjoy my passion if I'm not happy with myself. Oh, oh. coming up. <laughs> The inspiration in Byron's life and his plans for his future. Next. <laughs> Welcome back. We are with Byron Perkins. Byron made history last month for being the first football player at an HBCU to come out as gay. He went viral with his announcement to the world. You talked about your mom, Tracy, yes, earlier. And, you know, I can't imagine you know, what that felt like for her. Your mom looks so young. Uh, <laughs> uh, I can't imagine what it felt like for her knowing that the world can go after your child and mm. wanting to protect you. When she said to you after the first call came in, how did you say, Mom, it's gonna be okay? How did you assure her? Well, um, she was actually uh, in town that day for the, uh, the Richmond game. And um, when she came in town, uh, oh. she... <laughs> <laughs> when, she, God, when she came in town, uh, she basically uh, told me that, um, you know, son, um, I'm not mad. I'm not mad at all. It's just more so, it's just like, I love you. And she started crying. You. Of course, yeah. that made me cry. Oh, my and, God. And, and yeah, and I just Well, I know her, your mom is in Chicago, uh -huh. but she wanted to send you a message. Take a look at the message from mom. Good morning, Taz. I just want to take a moment to say thank you. Thank you for not listening to me that day. Thank you for having the courage to follow your own mind, your spirit, and your heart to find your own peace. I am so proud of you on becoming the leader that I've taught you to be. I love you with all my heart. I mean, what, what do you want your mom to know? That I love her. Well, wait, hang on. <laughs> mom, Tracy, are you here? Can you come on out, Tracy? <laughs> Where's <laughs> Like this, really. <laughs> Tracy, welcome to the tent. Your mama is hot, first of all. <laughs> Listen, have a seat. They say you get it from your parents. <laughs> he got it from you. Oh, so you told him that day. You said I was wrong. Mm -hmm. What did you, you were trying to protect him. Yes. What do you feel now that you got wrong? <sighs> what did I get wrong? Um, you know I what? No, I don't care about the wrong. What's right now? What's right now? I see this spirit, this, this lift off of him. Mm -hmm. I feel as if he now has energy. He, he has enthusiasm. Um, and he feels the pressure is off. And I feel as if that fear kept him in a box and he wasn't able to grow. Yeah. And so now I'm so excited because I know he's going to be great. Yeah. So. Yeah. Before we surprise you with your mom, seeing her say that on the video, you wanted to say something to her, and she's here now. Um, mama, you know, there are so many people who 
who have gotten on my nerves. <laughs> <laughs> and you are the only one who is allowed to get on my nerves nonstop, and I'll never stop loving you. I, I couldn't be more grateful um, to be your son. I, I really mean that, and I mean that full heartedly. And I've told you that before, Mama. Not only are you a trailblazer, but you're fierce. Yeah. And you're, fu you're powerful. And you're just so dynamic. And I, I, I would be blessed if I could just be half of the person that you are. Oh. Half. I, Tracy, first of all, thank you for jumping on the plane and coming here <laughs> and surprising him. Thank you. I know that you were not able to spend the holiday together. You haven't had a chance to really just sit down other than here. And I know it's hard with cameras and all of us <laughs> looking. Um, but there's a place that I absolutely love uh, that me and my son go to and me and my family. It's called Mark's Off Madison. And the chef Mark himself saved a table for you this afternoon. Um, this restaurant is a New York City gym. <laughs> Rustic Italian, European, traditional Jewish dishes. We love the lasagna at our house. It actually went viral for these famous Belgian fries. This chef Mark is incredible. What I, what I love about this place is that it's just built with heart and family mm -hmm. front of mind. And as I said, I take my family here. So they got the table with you for you both to sit down and, and talk because there's a lot that's happened. And as you said, a lot of incoming information, mm -hmm. but there's only one voice that matters and she's right there and yeah. she's got your back. Yeah. She's got your back. Byron and Tracy, thank you so, so much. I know this was the first time he's been on TV, and it's a lot. And our first job as a parent is to protect that yes. baby. And yes. you've done a phenomenal job. Thank you so much. I know you're not a baby. You're 22. <laughs> but thank you so much.